Welcome back to the discussion, Federal Insights Cyber, sponsored by KPMG on Federal News Radio, part of the Federal News Network. My guest today is Tony Hubbard, Government Cyber Security Lead at KPMG. I'm your moderator, Scott Massioni. So Tony, we just went through the, the whole landscape of everything, and I think one of the things that's really hitting government hard right now is, is supply chain. Right. Um, and you know we've seen a ban on uh, ZTE and Huawei and all that kind of stuff. So um, you know, w- what are you seeing with supply chain now that it's, people are kind of catching on to it? Yeah, there's, there's no question that is arguably right at the top of the list from a challenge perspective, just because of the complexity of so many moving parts to it. If you look at the entire, certainly the defense industrial base, if you look at the ecosystem involved, from a technology and a cybersecurity perspective. There's just so many moving parts, so many uh, vendors. I heard recently, like the F-35 program, there's over a thousand vendors uh, yeah. involved with that. So how do, you, how do you manage the security and the risk around that? And again, there's no, like we talked about earlier, there's not necessarily a silver bullet or an easy answer. And I really, a lot of it gets back to some of these basic hygiene topics we were talking about. If you look at some of the major breaches that have occurred, let's say over the last several years, a lot of them have been supply chain, third party vendor type of issues. So having an inventory of your vendors and knowing knowing who you're doing business with is kind of step one. It, it, it's kind of the same concept with your, your own technology environment, whether it's in having an inventory of your systems, an inventory of your devices, in this case, an inventory of your providers. If if you don't know what you have, you can't secure it. So having that first off, having that inventory of your providers is critical. Then secondly, doing a risk assessment around those vendors and those providers, so that you know of of thousand vendors that we have, there's probably ten, fifteen, whatever the number might be that are most critical to this entity that we're trying to secure. And then figuring out from a risk management approach, what do we do about it? Do you know, for the, for the higher risk vendors, it might involve going out and doing our own security test and evaluation or penetration testing, vulnerability assessments around those entities. If it's a cloud provider, making sure that you've got uh, FedRAMP accreditation for those mm-hmm. providers. If it's uh, another third party, you know, AICPA SOC 1, 2, 3 reports are good from an independent assessment perspective of, the, of those entities. Just try to have good governance around that process so that you at least do everything you can to try to make sure that those third parties are securing your data and supporting you in, in a secure manner. Again, easier said than done, but that it kind of starts with that basic governance process. And I mean, a lot of times, you know, what happens is the the subcontractor gets a subcontractor and then you, know, you don't know who has what, right, and what right, kind of right. equipment that they have. So, you know, would government benefit from just saying, you know, we need to have a scorecard, everyone needs to fill out this scorecard and keep us up to date, you know, is maybe some sort of legislation on that a good idea for the the country? Yeah, well, it's interesting you mentioned that because certainly the DOD is coming out with this new cyber maturity certification program, CMMC, that's being led. And, and that's kind of designed to go down that path, that for the defense industrial, contractors supporting the defense world are going to now be subject to these certifications and reviews by DOD, which are going to go in and assess some of the same things we're talking about. And, and that's coming about because of all these concerns around the supply chain and the defense industrial base. So I think that's positive. There's a lot of positive energy and buzz across Department of Defense about the CMMC program. And, and that could hopefully help with, with uh, addressing some of these potential vulnerabilities and then hopefully having the contractor world remediate them. And, you know, what's going to be expected of industry to, to do that? I mean, do you know, there's like the NIST framework, right? Mm-hmm. And or, or, Yeah, the framework. And that is a very uh, stringent set of, of things that the industry needs to follow and government needs to follow. Is this something that's similar to that? It, it is somewhat similar, and that is part of the challenge. As as government contractors, there are a lot of frameworks that we need to comply with. You got the NIST, CSF, cybersecurity framework, the risk management framework. Now you're going to have the CMMC effort, and and so that it is difficult as a government contractor to make sure you're checking all those boxes and having controls in place to to satisfy that. But that that's that's the reality of the world we're living in. And there's a lot of debate. You know, if you look at even going back years and years ago when the FISMA legislation came out, is are we, as a government ecosystem, are we more secure now because of FISMA, for instance? And there's, there's debate about that. I, I would argue that maybe FISMA doesn't necessarily equate to comprehensive uh, increased security controls, but it, there's certainly no question it's created more awareness 
about the issues and the vulnerabilities. And so from that perspective, a lot of this legislation could be positive. But at the end of the day, it's still going to be incumbent upon the contractors or the government agencies to really, as we talked about before, have this good cyber hygiene in place around some of the basic controls. And when you say FISMA, you're doing the, the Federal Information Sharing Act, uh, right? Federal Information Security Modernization Act. Right. Yeah, and, yeah, which, and is that partly sharing information, though, between industry and, and government? Yeah, good point. So that, yeah. that was certainly one of the key elements originally of FISMA. And then over a series of years, there's been more other legislation that's that's tried to promote more information sharing among industry and government and I think to a, to a certain extent with some mixed results because there's just a lot of industry organizations that are just going to be hesitant to share their yeah. information about having a breach and that's where I think having there's there's a number of, of third-party kind of nonprofit organizations uh, that have have popped up that can kind of help bridge some of that gap. And I think that that's a really good thing. So in terms of getting government folks and industry folks together to in the same room to kind of talk about threats, talk about vulnerabilities, and share that information in that form, that's been very positive. So hopefully, but again, that's, that's a small piece of it. In terms of broader scale information sharing, it's, it's still a work in process. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of what I was going to ask was, is industry open to doing that? Mm -hmm. Because I, I'm, for what I've heard, at least, it's it's not really happening. It's kind of one-sided. You know, DoD pushes out mm -hmm. its thing, and industry is kind of a little crickets on on that on their side. Um, you know, where is that hesitancy coming from? Well, I think it's as we talked about a moment ago. If you're an organization and you have a breach, you know, in some organizations, obviously, depending on their their strategy, their communication style, that you know, some will freely and openly let folks know, and in some cases, it gets out regardless. Yeah. But but in other cases, you know, there's just there's going to be a hesitancy, uh, to maybe sometimes to share that information, and so and that's where I think a lot of the legislation is heading to try to promote more of that information sharing and uh, you know, kind of a, a Chatham House rules kind of thing. Is like if you share it, there's no repercussions. We just need this right. information to try to make sure the whole ecosystem is more secure, and so hopefully that that will continue. Right. Well, we're going to take another break. Mm -hmm. uh, my guest today is Tony Hubbard. He's the Government Cybersecurity Lead at KPMG. I'm your moderator, Scott Massioni, on the discussion Federal Insights Cyber, sponsored by KPMG on Federal News Radio, part of the Federal News Network.